bless you. Amen. God bless you. Come on, come on, come on. Men giving their lives to Christ. That's powerful. That's powerful. Bless you, bless you, bless you. God bless you. Baby. Let God speak to you. Let God speak to you. Bless you. God speak to you. Thank God, thank God for those giving your life to Christ. If you're here today and, and you do have a church, don't have a church home. Maybe away from your church home for whatever reason you're already saved and you need a church home, won't you come? Come on, give God another praise in the house as you take your seat. God bless you. You may be seated. You may be seated. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Good to have you. Uh, Rev. Jesse. So we have uh, Brother McKinley Thigpen, Sheila Cole, and John Nixon, Jr. Bless you. And Ann. Huh? Ty, what, what we call him? That, what, Boogie Woogie? I can't remember. I'm going to say Because I, I didn't want to say what, What's your grand, grandson? No, what we call him? Boogie? Uh, Tyrell, okay, I like Tyrell, okay, amen. Now, you coming for reinstatement? Okay, good. Glad to have you back home, sir. God bless you. Amen. Now, you coming at, uh, as, as already saved? Okay, already saved. Want to be a member, okay, want to be a member. And then coming to receive Christ or... Amen. Praise God. Come on, give God some praise. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. Amen. I, I saw Nixon dynamite on the baseball field. They were so good, they wouldn't let me play with them. That's all right. Though. That's all. They always whooped us every time they played us, too. But 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 good to see you. Um, I want to just touch and agree with you, all, you two right now. Understand that as, as you come right now, you're giving your life to Christ. You're saying, Lord, I, I believe in you as being my Lord and Savior. I believe you died for my sins, all of my sins. The sins that we are still yet to commit, he still died for them. And he's given us great, and, and I, I receive your grace into my life to be saved and become part of your family, part, become part of the family of Christ. And so you're giving your life to Christ. He's saving you. He's making you a new creature even right now. Your confession, that's when it began to start. And so we're just touching agree on, with you on what you've already decided in your heart. Amen? And we're going to uh, uh, welcome Brother Thigpen in and, and Brother uh, uh, Tyrell back. But let's just pray for you two right now. Right? Y'all join hands right now. And, 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 and come on, let's just uh, agree with them in repeating the prayer with me, all right? 
just, just say, dear gracious God, I thank you for your abundant love for me. I come to you asking you to save me. I believe in Jesus as my Lord and Savior. And I know that you can and will save me by faith. So I thank you now. As I exercise my faith, I am saved in Jesus' name. And I thank you for my salvation, for my eternal salvation. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Come on, give God some praise. It's, it's wonderful. It's wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Come on up. Everybody would like to welcome. And, and Brother Thick, man, we, 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 don't, we don't do the old-fashioned thing. I remember back in the day. All right, everybody in favor of Brother Thick, man, becoming part of our. We, we don't do that. We Because we, <laughs> I probably would have never made it in. <laughs> Come on up. If you want to welcome Brother Thick, man, into our ministry, uh, And y'all come on up, come on up, welcome them in. Let them know they made the greatest decision they could make. And thank God. Thank God.
choir want to sing today. Amen. They took us back, didn't they, though? Amen. I know. Anyway, um, could I have the, we're going to have the communion, but I, I want to have that. We'll, we'll have that after, after Christy. Come on, come on up at this time. The parents of Braylon James Cooper and the godparents, if you would come at this time. And all the aunties and uncles and grandma, just all y'all come on up because what they say, it takes a village raise a child, and it really does. Everybody, everybody come on up. Huh? Hey Amen. And, 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 and you all think I'm being a little facetious, but I'm being for real. It takes a good support system to really raise a child. Uh, to that where he know he or she knows that they are really loved and cared for by everybody in the, in the family and know that every grown up is going to be there to help them and protect them and so this this is great and so I thank God for the family standing as one on behalf of young Braylon um, what we come to do at this time is not a light matter I know we, we've done it many times in our church but it's it's not a light matter on what the parents have come here to do. They've come here to uh, do as Hannah has done. If you read the Old Testament or read about the church at Shiloh uh, uh, where Eli was in charge and Hannah had not had a child, she was barren and she was praying on the steps of the temple, praying that uh, the Lord would give her a child and it looked like she was, she was just praying her heart out. And it looked like she was intoxicated because she was just saying, speaking to God and no audible sound was coming out. And so Eli went out there to see what was going on. Okay, break the, oh. Hey, you can't upstage me, man. <laughs> All right, Braylon, we'll get on with it. But, but Hannah, because she was blessed at Shiloh, and the prophet came and told her, the, the high priest really, Eli came and told her, by this time next year, you'll have a child. And sure enough, it came to pass that God opened up her barren womb, and she had a child. And she brought the child back that next year, well, after the child was weaned, and, and dedicated the child to the Lord and to his service. And so... We're do, it's kind of similar to what Hannah did, that we're dedicating this child back to the Lord uh, and thanking God for the life and, and protection and, and uh, all the things that Braylon's going to become, all the positive things that Braylon's going to become. We're speaking that into his life today because this child got here by the grace of God. And it's going to be the grace of God that continues to keep him and, and keep the family together and the parents moving in the right direction, training him up in the way that he is to go. So we thank God for this young life here. I'll, I'll give you know, yeah, one of these. Okay, all right. See, wisdom is telling me, leave, leave these babies alone. They're doing good. Can you hold them, though? You can keep holding them? Okay. Oh, he's waving. He's looking at the mic. Uh oh, uh oh, somebody speaking preach, brother. Oh, well, let me let me have. But we thank God for the life that He has given, and thank God for the family. Uh, and I, I am so, I am so overwhelmed. The family standing up on behalf of you, Braylon. That shows they love you. Amen. He, he's saying amen. And so we're just going to dedicate Braylon back to the Lord. He can't make a decision right now on the Lord because we don't know what he's thinking on his mind. But we're praying that the day he comes to the age of accountability, that he will give his life to the Lord and, and let God direct him uh, all the days of his life. And so that's our prayer. And I'm hoping and praying that that's how the family leads him to be a good, godly person, uh, doing what the Lord would have him to do. Who are the actual godparents here? Because I, I want you to realize that you're taking on a big responsibility yourself. 
uh, you're to come alongside uh, uh, the, the mother and, and Braylon and help them uh, in, in their time of need. Um, and so it, it's a big responsibility. A um, uh, lot of Christmases and birthdays and, and even other times, just babysitting and stuff like that. So, And I thank God that you have a heart to share. Uh, and just in case, I know there's a big family here, just in case something does happen to the parents, you may be in line to actually take care of the child. And so that's a big responsibility. And so we're praying for you all. We're praying for all of her entire family. Let us let us pray. Let us pray. Who's this little cute guy here? Let, okay, let, let us pray. Let us pray. Dear gracious God, we thank you for the life of young Braylon. Lord, we know that he is a blessing sent from you. And, Lord, we just lift this blessing back up to you, and we dedicate him to you, Lord, uh, that all the days of his life that you will watch over him, keep him safe from hurt, harm, and danger. We, we rebuke any childhood disease that may attempt to come upon him. We rebuke them right now. Lord, we pray that he will grow up healthy, whole, and holy, and saved, Lord. And so we just thank you for that right now. We speak it into his life. We speak unity and comfort and love into this whole entire family, that they would show him love, that they will correct him when he needs correcting, uh, encourage him when he needs encouraging, teach him what he needs to know, Lord. And we just thank you for the love that is going to uh, be his support system all the days of his life. So bless the family, bless Braylon, bless Mama and, and Daddy and Bless them all, Lord, that they will all be on one accord working for the betterment and, and uh, uh, bro, uh, young Braylon. So I thank you for him. Bless as only you can. We speak it in Jesus' name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Come on, give God some praise for Braylon James Cooper. Amen. That concludes the baby dedication. At this time, we'll hear the announcements. I'm sorry. No, we're not going to hear the announcements. We're going to do the Lord's Supper. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Oh, the blood of Jesus. You know I'm off key with Byron. Don't play me like that. <laughs> As we enter into this very special and sacred period of our worship service, uh, the partaking of the Lord's Supper, we're going to have scripture reading by Minister uh, Reverend Marilyn Merle and uh, prayer written by Reverend Leroy Campbell. I will be reading from 1 Corinthians, the 11th chapter, starting at the 23rd verse, concluding at verse 30, reading from the NIV translation. And it reads as follows, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. So then whoever eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat of the bread and drink of the cup. 
For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ, eat and drink judgment on themselves. For this is why many among you are weak and sick, and a number of you have fallen asleep. May the Lord bless the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we pray now that the Holy Spirit prepares our hearts and our minds to receive communion, Lord. And if there's any of us, Lord, that need to repent, Lord, before receiving communion, Lord, let us do so, Lord. Now, Father, we ask your blessings upon the bread and the juice to represent the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. It's in Jesus' name.
I'm so glad you're in my life. Glad you came to save us. I'm so glad you came to save us. Oh, you came, you came from hell down to earth to show the way. From the earth to the cross. My debt to pay. From the cross to the grave. Lord, I lift your name on high. Said again, oh, you came. From the earth to the cross. My debt to pay. From the cross to the grave. The grave to the sky. Lord, we lift your name. Said one more time, oh, you came. You came from hell. There's nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you, hallelujah. Nobody greater, nobody greater, nobody greater than you. Come on, let's sing that out. Nobody greater, nobody, nobody. Nobody, nobody greater than you. Nobody greater. Nobody. Nobody. Nobody greater than you. Nobody greater. Nobody. Nobody. Nobody greater than you. Amen to that. Amen. Nobody greater. You can search the terrestrial world over. You can go to the highest mountain, go to the deepest blue sea, and you'll find nobody greater than Jesus Christ himself. Nobody greater. He alone was able to take all our sins and bear them on the cross that we would have a right to the tree of life. Nobody greater had us in mind from the beginning of time. And so I thank God for that grace that still flows to us today. His love that, that encompasses us, his, his salvation that has saved us, his sacrifice that has made it possible. He knew he would be the sacrificial lamb. He knew he would have to suffer all those things recorded in scripture. He knew that he would be beaten, whipped beyond recognition. Uh, he knew that he would be bruised. Uh, uh, and, and wounded, bruised for our chastisement, uh, bruised for our iniquities, and wounded for our chastisement. He would suffer everything that we should have suffered on the cross. But let me tell you something. It wouldn't have made any difference if we had died on the cross because we couldn't pay the penalty for our own sin. Only Christ could do that. And when he died on Calvary's cross, he paid the price for every sin that would be committed in this earth realm by any and every man, woman, boy or girl that would ever be born. He paid the price for everybody's sin. Yes, I said he paid the price for everybody's sin. The sad thing is, is that many still have not accepted his payment in full. They're trying to do things on their own, work it out their own self, or just ignoring uh, that their debt is already paid in full. But he paid the price for every man, woman, boy, and girl who would ever uh, be birthed into this earth realm. And I'm so thankful that, that Mama taught me, the church taught me, Pastor Walton taught me that when I came to the age of accountability, the least I can do 
is give my life back to Christ. And so I'm so glad I'm saved. I'm so glad. I may not run up and down the aisles. I may not run through the grocery store talking hallelujah and I'm saved. But I, I'm so glad I'm saved. Only by the blood, the shed blood of Jesus Christ. And so we thank God for him dying on Calvary's cross to pay the price for all of our 